Welcome to this video where we're going to cover exporting your timesheets to QuickBooks. Exporting timesheets for payroll and for job costing might be the single biggest time saving thing from an office perspective. It's a great tool. Now you can use other tools for payroll and often contractors do. There's things like ADP and paychecks and other third party applications that do your payroll for you. And they all do a good job. Um, the problem with using external sources is that typically it's done for payroll and it doesn't give you any job costing information. So typically they'll give you a journal entry back at the end of the payroll cycle that says, you know, here's the money that you got to pay for payroll and here's your payroll expense, which is good for accounting. You're going to need it, but it doesn't break it down at all by job. The nice thing about QuickBooks payroll or Intuit's payroll is that not only does it do payroll and calculate your deductions, but it also applies the payroll costs, including the wages and workers comp and everything incurred on the job to the job automatically. So as I cut my paychecks, it automatically applies each employee's hour according to the jobs they worked on so that you can run job costing reports in QuickBooks. It's a phenomenal advantage to do all your job costing without spending an extra second. You have to do payroll anyway. This is just going to automatically do your labor job costing at the same time. It's a great tool. This is how to make it work in Element. We're going to start now by jumping into Element Time to show you a couple of things that you have to have set up before you do your payroll. So number one, go to your settings and go to payroll. Make sure you've got your overtime rules set up. For example, if I pay weekly overtime, I'm going to want to make sure that's on yes and after X number of hours a week. Make sure that's saved. So your overtime rules have to be set up. Next, make sure you've got payroll codes set up. You can do that under the settings over here under payroll codes. Payroll codes are really important because they're going to link to the QuickBooks payroll codes. And in QuickBooks, a payroll code is what's, uh, what determines how much an employee gets paid. So if I quickly go to QuickBooks here, I'm going to open this employee called Ron Duguay. And I'm going to go to payroll info. Now, Ron's got a few payroll codes associated with him. He's got his hourly wage in the field. It's $24 an hour. He's got his hourly overtime. It's $36 an hour. He's got an hourly wage if he works on overhead tasks, same wages. And Ron actually gets a premium if he works on snow jobs. So he's got an hourly rate for snow and an hourly overtime rate for snow. Now, LMN will handle all this and it'll actually export the right wages for the right times and even the right kinds of jobs. So we're going to do that by A, making sure that first you've set up your payroll codes in LMN. And then B, you can assign payroll codes to jobs or even to job types. So for instance, I'm going to go to job types. I'm going to open the snow and I'm going to click the payroll tab. So what I've done here is said for any job that's of a job type snow, pay these payroll codes. So it's our snow wages, our snow overtime and our snow salary. But for my regular install or my regular service jobs, if I go to payroll, they're just set to the account default. And the account default is here under pay is sorry, here under payroll. Uh, default payroll codes are just my regular field wages uh, and field wages salary, field wages overtime for people that A get paid overtime and B are paid salary. So if I look in uh, back in QuickBooks here, what it's going to do is look at the LMN jobs. And if the job is of the default type, it's just going to use the regular uh, wage codes. If it's a snow job, it's going to use the snow wage codes. So it'll pay Ron the appropriate wage based on the task he's working on. Now, if you only always pay your employees one simple wage, this is a lot easier. I really just need field and overtime. And that's probably all we'll do for this export just to keep things simple. So going back here to LMN time, you have to have your payroll code set up. You have to have your overtime rules set up. Everything after that is simply the LMN time export tool. So we're going to go and run the LMN QuickBooks export sync application, which looks like this. We installed and we set this up in an earlier video. If you haven't watched that video, make sure you watch that one before you do this. Once you're here, though, if you're going to do payroll, you're going to want to click up here on the LMN time tab. It's going to give you a few more options and it's obviously going to give us the publish time option. That's what we're actually going to use to run the export. Before you do your export, you've got to make sure you've got these settings right. Number three, chooses your job costing style. None means we're not going to do any job costing in, in QuickBooks. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can turn it on if you want to keep things really simple. Simple means we'll export um, time to QuickBooks against jobs 
but we won't use uh, cost codes. So it won't break it any deeper. It'll just give you a, a total time for the job and a total cost. It won't break it down by your different cost codes. Detailed, which is what we recommend, will break down the time by job, by cost codes. So you actually see which part of the job went over or under budget on labor costs. And if you've set up your cost codes in LMN, it's done for you already. Even though it's detailed, and typically we recommend keeping things simple. Once you've set up your cost codes in LMN and LMN time, your detailed job costing is done for you. So we typically recommend this one on. Next, make sure that you've gone through step four, which is here. We won't actually go through it, but that's where you're going to match your cost codes. If you've done that already, you don't need to do it again. It's set up, but it'll also match your classes. It'll match your staff. That's obviously critical for running payroll and match your payroll items. Payroll items would be your regular wages and overtime wages that we looked at um, earlier. Make sure those are matched. Once all those are matched, we're ready to do your first time export. But before you do a time export, make sure you've completed at least a full week, a full week of payroll. You can't export partial weeks. It screws up overtime calculations. QuickBooks and LMN need to see a full week of an export in order to determine at what point overtime starts. And if you do it in pieces, it doesn't work properly. So make sure you've got a whole week of payroll first. So first we're gonna to go to publish time. And we're gonna get this screen. And we're gonna say next when we're ready, continue. It's gonna look and it's gonna start, say when do you wanna publish time for? So note that I only have an option to do full weeks. So I'm gonna pick the full week starting and then I'm going to pick my payroll start date. So I'm going to pick April 1st. Now you're going to need to make sure that you've got all your timesheets approved for this week. If a uh, timesheet is detected for the week and not approved, you're going to get a warning message saying, hey, wait a minute, we found some timesheets that haven't been approved yet because LMN will only export approved time. So it's probably a best practice that you don't go any further until you've made sure all the timesheets for that time period have been approved before you run your sale. So we'll go next, and then it asks us which employees. So if you want to exclude some of the employees from the export, you can do that. We're going to go next. All right, most of you won't see this next warning that comes up, but it is an important warning, so we wanted to show you in this video. If you've already, we mentioned earlier that you can only export full weeks at a time. If time already appears in QuickBooks for those weeks, you're going to get a warning message that looks like this. And I'm just going to click yes, which will purge all my existing time for that time period and re-export it. Other messages you may get before you export your time might be something like you've got jobs in LMN time that haven't been added to QuickBooks yet. So it'll give you a list of those jobs. And at that uh, screen, you have the opportunity to either match those jobs to existing jobs in QuickBooks. Maybe they're not spelled the same. Or if you just leave it at the default, LMN will add new jobs for you in QuickBooks with the name of the customer and the job as it's been set up in LMN. Uh, so you won't have to do any work, it'll do it for you. Just, it does give you the option though, before it does it, to match them existing. Could be that they're already in QuickBooks, they just have a different name. So once you know you're ready to go, choose the option you wanna do. In this case, I'm gonna click yes. It's gonna make a funny noise while it erases all the existing time records, and then it's gonna begin your time import. Now, as long as I've, matched all my employees and they all have their payroll codes and I've matched all my jobs, should look like this. You're gonna get all these time records imported. If you have an error, you should have an error log down here, open log, and that'll often tell you what the error is. Usually it's a matching error, something isn't matched correctly and uh, help you fix it. And if it's uh, something that's outside of your understanding, make sure you save this, send it to our support so we can help you fix the problem. Once this happens, it's a good thing, and this is what will happen once you've got everything matched and you're sort of in the groove. Uh, this is what it looks like in QuickBooks. So I'm going to go to Employees, and I'm going to go to Enter Time and look at a weekly timesheet. So we'll pull up a weekly timesheet here for Chico, and we will look at the week we exported. And this is what it looks like when it, when it exports from LMN to QuickBooks. So what happens is Chico's time for the week is set up down here but it's all been broken down by the jobs that Chico worked on that week. So Monday, we can see he worked on the hall residence, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday looks like Chico was on a maintenance run and he worked on a bunch of different jobs, including uh, at the shop and a bunch of maintenance jobs down here. And all the hours and minutes that he spent on each job has been broken down. Same thing on Friday, uh, so that that's all exported correctly. Now note the payroll item. Once Chico hit his 40 hours, the payroll item started to switch to uh, overtime. 
So it automatically calculated when Chico's 40 hours were up. And once that happened, it flipped it now to an overtime wage so that uh, Chico's going to get paid overtime for all the hours spent over and above his 40 hours. Once we're good there, we're great. We're going to save and close. And now I've got all Chico's time ready for payroll, but it's also ready for job costing. Now it won't show up on job costing until you run your pay employees. So you can run a payroll uh, employees, either scheduled or unscheduled. That's when you actually make the employees checks. The second you make those checks, the cost of the check, including all of Chico's uh, workers comp and payroll taxes and everything gets applied to all those jobs in the time increments that were booked to them. So your payroll and your job costing is all done in one step. Fantastic tool, makes things really easy for job costing. If you have any questions about this process, uh, check goelmn.com slash help first. There's lots of frequently asked questions and also some troubleshooting errors that can help you get past some of the errors that happen in your first couple of exports when you're not quite used to everything. If you're still having problems, make sure you reach out to us. Hit us up on live chat, or if it's after hours, shoot us an email at advice at goelmn.com. We will get back to you. We'll help you get through it. It's worked for thousands of companies. It'll work for you. It's just a matter of getting your setup right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in another video.